Thank you. As a trial attorney, I take delight in representing my client. And my trainee commends me to represent clients and not causes. But the story I'm about to tell you is unique because it has little or nothing to do with trial advocacy. I discovered that victory in court alone is not enough to keep my client out of jail. And now, this has been my experience. So what I discovered is that just representing my client and just doing the normal work that I do every day is not enough. I discovered that I have to do more. I have to be able to make sure that they don't keep going back to jail over and over again. Now, this was where I was four years ago because I was dealing with a serious problem where my client keep going back and forth in jail. Now, what has changed, what has changed for me is that I discovered that in modern America, it is actually better to be rich and guilty than to be poor and innocent. <laughs> so what I've done that I've changed the way I do my practice is that all of a sudden, I wake up every day excited to go to work. And what has changed? Because I believe if I share a little bit about my story, it might inspire one or two other people not to give up hope. Here is what has changed. Everyone here knows that spoken weather can be very tough, especially around Christmas time. And for someone like me that grew up in Africa, tropical Africa, it is particularly brutal. <laughs> so it was one of those under 10 degree days that I walked into a transitional shelter and it was cold. Just all of a sudden, somebody jumped at me. He said, Francis, remember me. You saved my life. You got me out of jail. I am so happy. I got a job, and I got a house. But then I started using drugs again, and I lost everything. When I look around the faces of all the people in that room that day, I could number as many as three or four or five of them. They are all huddled in blankets, and I know them by first name. Now, every one of those people have been able to win motion trial to get them out of jail. Sometimes I go to trial for them, but has anything changed? When Mike finally let go of my hand, I saw something on the wall of the transitional shelter. It was the least of all the homeless people that died that year that are affiliated with the shelter. And when I go, got near, I discover a particular name. And virtually everyone on that list, I know because I used to represent them. But a particular name jumped at me. It was a gentleman that had told me about the problem he had with alcohol and because he had the complication, he was suffering from dementia, alcohol-induced dementia, Kosakov syndrome. And he told me all the problem he was going through. When I inquired about the cause of death, I was told that he died of frostbite. Now, what has happened then to change me from the sad Francis to the joyful Francis? You know, when you find out what my clients go to jail for, it's interesting that they go to jail with something we never take for granted. Virtually everybody in this room are in middle class. You will never ever be able to get to a place where you'll be cited for trespass, for nuisance, for noise violation. But my client was charged for taking a bite. Mike, the last case I did for Mike was because he took a bite of an apple at the 7-Eleven store. Guess what the value of the item is? 78 cents. Now, Mike got to go to jail. You know how much it costs to keep Mike in jail? $120 per day. 
Now, what has happened since then is interesting. Because when I walk out of that transitional shelter that day, and I look at what was going on, I felt terrible. I believe my, my client shouldn't have to die such an horrible, hopeless death without dignity in the greatest and wealthiest nation on earth. So, when I eventually got back to my office, I was excited and overjoyed when I found a team that are putting together a new court, a new way of doing criminal justice. It consists of prosecutors, you know, strange bedfellows, prosecutors and public defenders coming together. Prosecutors coming together with public defender. Probation officers coming together to work with people. And we, together we form a plan. And we discover that majority of the people that we have suffer from severe mental health. Luckily for us, our current police chief in Spokane was able to help us get data. And those data were able to confirm to us that my client was serving life sentence 20, 30 days at a time. You know, one of the things that my hero, Nelson Mandela said, is that overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity. It is an act of justice. Now, I discovered that with the help of the data, we discovered that in eventually, some of my clients were actually in a position where they can't change what is going on. They need help. So we discovered to move the court from the courthouse to the library where my clients spend their day. And that has made a difference. And we form a partnership with Spokane Medical Health Foundation at that time and Providence Consistent Care. We were able to provide services for people while they are in court. The group of service providers were co-located with the court at the place where the client lives, at the place where the client are. That has made a difference. Because my client don't want to go to the courthouse, but they will go to the library. So all those, all those data we are able to help us get into, into know what is going on behind the scene. So, what has changed? Another thing that has changed, we discover from the data a disparate impact on people of color with this low-level crime. And then, we also find data that shows that the majority of my clients at the Spokane County Jail was... was suffering from serious mental health issues. Now, all of this was going on when we discover that something that we can do that can make a difference might be to try to see what we can do to connect services together. The community, the continuum of care that we were able to provide for people has been able to make a difference in people. So, we have people that are providing housing, people that are providing health care, people that are providing all kinds of services, all co-located with the court. So eventually, we got to a point where we were able to house 143 participants, homeless people, people that have been homeless for 25, 50 year, 15 years. They were housed. 143 participants were housed within the first two years of the program. When people work together, we can make a difference. When people collaborate together, we can make a difference. Now, when you go through all of this, you could see that there is one thread in all that I'm telling you. We cannot continue to live in silos. Because for so long, the criminal justice system has been insulated from the community. And as long as we don't know what is going on in the community, people that come to court, they get what they deserve, right? But it wasn't always like that. So, we've been able to provide all these services through the partnership that we have. And those partnerships have been able to make a difference. Now, let me quickly go to the, to the end of my slide. 
to give you an idea of what has changed since we started this. Finally, all these service providers that came together were able to discover that if we all can begin to have a continuum of care, when somebody needs clothing, when somebody needs housing, when someone needs help, we can get, get it for them. Now, one of the things that Dr. Martin Luther King said, because the challenges we are facing with homelessness in this nation is great. One of the things that, we, that Dr. King said was that the long arc of moral universe tends to be long, but it eventually will come on the side of justice. You know, we need a court that is not run on the back of the poor, based on fines and fees paid by the poor. But that court is only going to happen if we all step up and begin to challenge the status quo and find out. So I want to hold you, as I round up, that you look into your community. What is going on? What can we do? They, get, that, get the data on how many people are homeless in your city. Challenge. Why are we not doing something about it? What can we do about it? And if you have a community court in your neighborhood, I urge you to visit them. Find out what is going on. Find out how you can help. Volunteer. If you can't volunteer, please go in there. And please, when you are there, thank them for me. Because the volunteers make the difference. Now, it's not me. It takes a community of people coming together. A judge willing to dispense justice using community input. Prosecutors that are willing to move away from the mindset that they judge by their measure of success by how many convictions they get. Landlord willing to, willing to rent to people with criminal history. People that are willing, uh, employers of labor that are willing to overlook criminal record in order to employ people and give people a chance. We need to give people a chance. Thank you. I want you to join me.